How is she? Oh, not too bad considering. Concussion and a dislocated shoulder. Oh, lucky. When can I talk to her? Well, a couple of minutes. What's the trouble? You found a body in a flat. Whose? A flatmate's. They're both well-known call girls, by the way. And you think she did it? No, it doesn't look like it. The whole place has been turned upside down. Could be robbery, could be something else. Neighbours saying? Oh, you got to be joking. I thought it was going to be one of those nice routine days. Life beginning to bore you, huh? Gil! Gil Gilberts! I thought I saw you walking here a minute ago. Harry, haven't seen you for some time. You haven't changed a bit, mate. I've uh, put on a bit of weight myself. G'day. Uh, Steve, this is Harry Stanton, an old acquaintance of mine. Acquaintance? He taught me everything I knew in the police cadets. That was a long time ago, mate. Harry's a private investigator now in Melbourne. Oh, not anymore. Too cold for me down there. I'm home for good. What are you doing here? Here? What? Well, it's an old mate of mine. He had a bad coronary. You know what it is, Gil. Middle age. You've got to look after yourself, mate. Doctor, she's ready now. Thank you, nurse. What have you got here? Oh, investigating a homicide. Oh, I see, yeah. Well, look, I've got to go, mate. Let's get together, have a few beers. What do you say? I'll give you a ring. Nice meeting you, Doc. Take care of yourself, mate, won't you? Very outgoing, isn't it? It certainly is. Miss mm. Felden, I'm Dr. Hamilton. This is Detective Inspector Gilberts. You're a very lucky girl, you know. In a couple of weeks, you'll be as good as new. Thank you. I wonder if I can ask you a few questions, Miss Felden. All right, go ahead. After the accident, the investigating officers found Cheryl Rhodes dead in your flat. Can you tell me how she died? I don't know. I came home and I found her on the couch. And? Well, I was frightened and I ran. Look, Doctor, I don't feel very well. My head hurts. All right. Gil, um, can you give her a little while to settle down? I'll come back later. Look, uh, I know this is a great strain, but he has to get moving as quickly as he can. I know, but my head does hurt. Anyway, I'm allergic to cops. Well, do you feel any better now he's gone? No, not really. I'd prefer to talk to you. Good. What can you tell me about it? I came home, I found Cheryl on the couch, I panicked and I, and I ran. I'm sorry, but it's all I can remember. Well, did you see anyone outside the flat, anyone suspicious? Or... It's not much to go on, is it? No, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Look, I'll call in and see you in the morning. Hey, wait. When can I get out of here? Well, that depends how you are in the morning. Oh, I'll be fine. Really, I'd be much better off at home. <laughs> it's not that bad here, is oh, it? Oh, it is. I hate hospitals. <laughs> really, ever since I've been five years old. All right, we'll see. Hey. You wouldn't have a cigarette on you, would you? No, uh, I could get a sister to bring you some. Oh, yes, please. I'll go crazy. And I'll see you in the morning. Steve. Uh, no, no messages, but can you hang on? Because Gordon would like to speak to you. Hello, Stephen. Yes, I've got some interesting information on your call girl. Yeah, I had to check out the flatmate. Yeah, it's quite a mess, I can tell you. No, strangled. No, no evidence of sexual assault. Oh, incidentally, Gill's off the case. He had to go down to Melbourne to give the boys at Yarra Central a hand. Yeah. Yes, Tim will pick you up. According to the pathologist, it couldn't have been a woman Paula's size. Well, that lets her off the hook. Yeah, it looks like it. Did you check up a drug addiction? Yeah, she takes a lot of tranquilizers, nothing else. Well, the Rhodes girl was on heroin when she died. Well, that explains why the flat was torn apart. Well, if they were looking for drugs, they must have found them. We didn't. Did you talk to her? Yeah, she only repeated what she told Gil. Sound likely to you? Well, she's highly strung and neurotic. I'd say what happened yesterday could easily have frightened her off. I better have a will with it. Look, could you hold off till tomorrow? Take it out of here! It's not fit for human consumption! No bloody wonder you've got sick people in here! The doctor specifically ordered this! Miss Felden, please! Take it away! All right, then, I'll leave. 
I'm sorry. I'm afraid your patient's being a little difficult this morning. Well, we'll see about that. Oh, nurse, remember, uh, patience is a virtue. Good morning. I thought I'd seen the last of that. When a doctor orders breakfast for you, it's usually for a very good reason. All right, now that's a start. What was all that commotion about? Oh, that idiot nurse. You know how time she woke me up this morning? Six o'clock. Six o'clock with a pill. I'm not usually going to bed till then. Oh, it's very tough, I know. And they took all my sleeping pills. You only take what I prescribe. Now, have some orange juice. Did you get any sleep? Mm. Couple of hours, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Are you married, Doctor? Yes, we're, um, we're separated. Oh. I'm sorry. It's all right. I mean, I didn't mean to... Uh, tell me, how do you feel overall? Pretty good. When can I leave? Well, if you're a very good girl, and you don't disrupt the whole hospital, Maybe this afternoon. It's a deal. And you eat your lunch. All right. But what I really need is a double brandy. <laughs> well? Are you coming by before I leave? I'm afraid uh, I won't have time. Oh. Well, thanks for patching me up. It's a pleasure. And uh, Sergeant Maloney will be in later to ask you a few questions. All right. You take care of yourself, eh? Oh, Jackie, thank God you're here. Did you bring me any tranquilizers? I didn't have time to stop at your place, so I brought you some of mine. Oh, bless you. I've been going off my head. I uh, just heard about Cheryl. Yeah, I didn't want to say anything over the phone. I feel terrible. She and I went to school together. Do the coppers know who did it? No. Uh, well, that's typical. Paula was Cheryl in trouble again. Look, Jackie, you're a good friend. But I don't want to talk about Cheryl right now. And I think it'd be best if you didn't ask too many questions, all right? I see. Is there anything else I can do for you? No, thanks, darling. They're letting me out this afternoon. Hey, maybe I can meet you down the beer garden. We'll have a drink. Right. The only alcohol I've seen around here, they put on needles. <laughs> Listen, I'd better get out of here. Hospitals make me very depressed. They make you depressed. If that doctor wasn't such a darling, I'd have slashed my wrists <laughs> by now. See you later, then. Right. And thanks very much for bringing all the things. Anytime. Ta-da. came out of the building, across the footpath, and onto the street, right in front of my car. That's it. And you sure you didn't see anyone who might have been chasing her? Oh, I can't remember. It all happened so quickly. I didn't see anybody but her. Look, I've been driving for 25 yeah, right. years. right. Thanks, Mr. Fagley. Well? I don't know, Tim. I just don't know. I talked to her this afternoon. She doesn't strike me as being the type who panics like that. Well, you've got to remember the circumstances. That girl's been around, Steve. Now, there's something about her story that doesn't sound right to me. All right. Why would she lie? Fear? Well, the drug squad suspects that uh, Cheryl Rhodes was selling heroin on a large scale. Now, Paula may have known the killer. Yes, and she might have surprised him. And that would explain why she panicked. Hey, I just remembered something. Her blouse was undone. It was torn. It was all ripped about. I tell you, this is the last time I'll set foot in this hospital. I may be sick, dying, whatever, but I will never come here again. Excuse me. Thank you. It's all mine, don't worry. I haven't sunk so low that I'd steal from a hospital. There you are, Anna. Oh, 
That's much better. How do you feel? Well, my head hurts. My arm feels like it's going to fall off. It's like I feel most mornings. You look all right. Thanks. Well, you could have been killed, you know. Thanks again. Sorry. I uh, suppose you won't want to go back to your flat tonight. Why don't you come and stay with Bert and me? I know he won't mind. Oh, I don't know. Well, you can't go back there, can you? I think I might go overseas for a while. Take a long holiday. Huh? When? Tonight. Tomorrow. Oh, I see. Where? I know. Look, love, have you got any money? Fifty dollars. Oh, well, it's Bert. He's had some bad luck at the track. I've had to go back to work. Oh, it's all right. You better keep the fifty dollars. Well, can you get it somewhere else? Maybe. Hilda's looking for some girls. No, I'm through with that. I mean it this time. Seems to me I've heard that before. Yeah. I might give up cigarette smoking, too. I wish I could help. So do I. Maybe the police. No, I don't think so. I don't trust them. Most of them, anyway. Uh, I've got a patient for you, Steve. Oh, what happened? That's Arnold Ryan, one of our better-known drug pushers. He got caught with a kilo of heroin and uh, drew a knife on the arresting officers, didn't you, Arnold? They had to take it away from him. I'll wait outside until you finish. Has to put up quite a fight. Sit there. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. No stitches, anyway. You might know a pusher called uh, Cheryl Rhodes. She was killed. Too bad. Oh, so you can talk, can you? No, it's just hanging around the cross like that. I thought you might have seen her. What's your game, mate? <laughs> I think I just thought you might have seen her, that's all. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. I know a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Well, you might know a flatmate. Paula Felden. Oh, you're really funny. Bloody comedian. Oh, maybe you don't know her then. Maybe you've heard something. Look, what's the uh, sentence for drug pushing? Must be 10, 20 years. Can you offer me a deal? Well, I can't promise anything. Yeah? Who can? Well, it depends on what you've got to say. Chill Rhodes, eh? Yeah. Maybe you'll tell them I'm the cooperative sort. Well, as I say, I can't promise anything. Yeah. But look, the only thing I know about Cheryl Rose is she was having a little trouble with the big boys, you know? She tried to quit selling for a while, but then they made her an offer that she couldn't refuse. What sort of offer? It's only a rumour, mind you, but they say it was Frank Krauss. What else? You know, if this gets out... Oh, what else? It was going around that she was going to dob him in if he didn't let her go. So that's it. Frank Krause. Well, it'll really make my day if we could tie him down with this. Would he have done it? No, he hires others to do his dirty work. So now we have to find the killer. Well, if Krause is the one, that's the only way we'll get to him. Well, thanks, Steve. Well, I didn't do anything. He uh, did all the talking. Well, that's very obliging of him. Oh, you'll find him very cooperative. And what about Paula? Well, there's still no sign of her, but it's only been an hour, so she shouldn't be too hard to find. Yes, I know Johnny. Look, you know, I wouldn't ask if I wasn't desperate. No, no, I haven't forgotten. I know I owe you a great deal. Now I'm asking again. I have to leave the country. Please don't ask me why I... I have to go. I'm in trouble. Oh. I can come over and see you? No, no, I'm in a phone booth. I'll... I'll be there in ten minutes. Yeah, no, you wait there. I'll get a taxi. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks. I'll be right over.
coming. Where have you been? We've been looking everywhere for you. I've been here and there. How'd you find out where I lived? Mm, it's a secret. I know someone who's a very good friend mm. of yours, but I'm not telling you. Come on, you sit down. <laughs> there. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm a little drunk. I'm afraid you are too, yes. Well, aren't you going to offer me a nightcap? No, I'm not. I'll offer you some coffee if you like. Mm. I can't go home. I know. I've got nowhere else to go. Why is that, Paula? I'm in trouble. But I can't tell you why. Because even though you're a very lovely man, you're a cop. And I don't trust you. I want to help you. Nobody else does. I've been finding out who my true friends are tonight. Nobody. How about some of that coffee, eh? Never touch it. You don't mind my coming here? Uh, not at all, no. I've got nowhere else to go. Yeah, I know. But what are we going to do with you? I could stay here. Oh, I don't think... Th oh, it's all right. It's all right. Don't worry. Perfectly right on the couch. You see? It's lovely. Lovely. Perfect. This is a spare blanket. Look, no, really, I don't think that we... <laughs> None of the neighbours saw me. None of them. <laughs> but, uh, it... Well, look, it's nearly 11 now. I'm not worried. I'm not... You see, you're a doctor. And all of my doctors... <laughs> are doctors. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll call my secretary. That's what I'll do. Now, she'll have... Um, she... She... Damn. Well, why did you lie to us in hospital, Paula? Fear. Do you realize what my life's worth just about now? Well, you just can't pretend it never happened. I thought I could leave the country when things didn't work out. Well, you knew you could give you protection. And what about next year and the year after? People carry grudges. Well, I promise we'll do whatever we can for you. Thanks a lot. All right. Now, look, do you think you could identify him if you saw him again? Yes. Good. We'll get you to work on our files. And we think it's a good idea if you stayed in police custody for the time being. Yeah, we've made arrangements for you to stay in the hospital. Oh, no. No hospitals. Look, we can give you the best protection. I don't care where there. you put me, but no hospitals. I couldn't bear it. Paula, you can't very well stay at my flat, can you? Now, Pat, she'd put you up. Who's she? She's my secretary. I'm sure she would. You're absolutely sure you would? Absolutely. Do... You told me two days, Harry. I know, Mr. Kreiss. I don't need to tell you what happens if that Felton girl identifies you. I can take care of it. Why didn't you? I didn't get a clear chance out of her. What about last night? Uh, you didn't take care of her last night because you lost her, didn't you? You came to me with a very high reputation, Harry. There's a great deal of trust implied in that. Yeah. Ah. Disposing of the Rhodes girl should have been a simple, clean little job. But you've placed me in a very difficult position. Give me another 24 hours. Paula Felden is now at the police station. Oh, you're not the only idiot I've got working for me. Go on, get out of here. And Harry, you haven't got much time. not in there. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. He's not in any of those. Well, that makes things a little more difficult, doesn't it? Well, I'm sorry. No, I didn't mean it that way. You've done what you could. I guess I'm a little tired. Well, is that all there is? Yes. Well, what does that mean, that he's been brought in from somewhere else? Well, probably. Frank Krause only employs professionals. If he's not in our books, he's in someone else's. Oh, wonderful. A man no one's seen before. Come in. 
Did you find him? No. Oh. Okay, Paula, this is Pat Casey. You'll be staying in her flat tonight. Hello, Paula. Hello. Yes, well, you've had a long day. We won't keep you any longer. Steve will drive you over. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's go. Uh, Steve. Paula's been taking pills all afternoon. Well, she can get them from almost any doctor in Sydney, so... No, uh, tell Pat to be careful. I wanted to ring me if anything should happen. Yeah. I've arranged for more cars to be in the area throughout the night. Well, let's hope we don't need them. You wouldn't have any whiskey, would you? We could make an Irish coffee. No. Hang on a sec. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. Well, come on, finish the story. Oh, there's nothing more to tell. Well, doesn't he go anywhere, do anything? No, he lives by himself, doesn't go anywhere, just works, eats and sleeps. How awful. Oh, we try and help him, but I think it's a bit, a bit early at the moment. Maybe when he finds the right girl again. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, well, life goes on and on. Do you want to watch something on telly? Oh, no. I can never sit still long enough to watch anything. Oh, I watch it too much. That's your biggest problem. You know, a nice girl like you, you should have someone to care about you. Someone who looks after you. Do you? Oh, not at the moment. It's all you need. It's all anyone needs. And what about you? You know, it's funny. But of all the countless legions of men I've gone through in my life, well, they say business and pleasure never mix. Have you ever thought about giving it up? Do little pigs fly? <laughs> ah. I wonder what time it is. I think you must have a guardian angel. You're a very lucky girl. I must be living right. Yeah. As I dialed, I heard a car drive off. Well, it's only a slim chance, but someone may have seen it. Well, it might have been stolen. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, we'll get that dug out and send off to ballistics. Well, at least we know he's not a crack shot. How is she, Steve? Oh, she's fine. A bit bruised, but she's OK. You know, this tears it. I should have my head examined. Look, I want to wish you could be watched 24 hours a day. I agree. Hospital? No hospitals. Oh, come on, Paul. You were that far off being killed tonight. So he found me. Hide me somewhere else. We don't know how he found you. Well, why does it have to be a hospital? Because it's the only place we can be sure of. It's either that or jail. No. Look, Steve, what about your place? My place? Well, he didn't find me there the other night. Well, just so it isn't a hospital. Oh, please, Steve, please. Well, oh, you have to have an armed guard for you. Oh, anything, anything at all. And I'll stay with her. All right, I'm putting my head on a block, but all right. Thanks. Yeah, we better get you moved. We won't be crowding you, will we, Steve? No, not at all. I'll move in with Tim. you take dictation to? Oh, morning. Now, as a matter of fact, I don't. Since you've taken my secretary... Your secretary? Oh, well, somebody's got to do all this. Well, as a matter of fact, I've got some letters in there. Yes, well, do it to... yourself. It's taken me a week to do anti-disestablishmentarianism. Well, I can't even spell it. Hello, Dr. Johnson. Oh, yes, right away. Stephen, Tim wants to see you. OK.
Kamēr? Dancing. Ah, is that the bullet? Yes, it's a three o three two five. Common enough. Well, it seems certain that Krauss brought the killer from interstate, but we still don't have a name for it. What are you going to do? Well, since we've exhausted all our normal means of catching him, I, I think we'd have to ask Paula to help us to catch him. You mean use Paula for bait? Yes, that's you just what I mean. You know how I feel about that, don't yeah, well, you? I don't like it either, Steve, but I think we've got to do He's it. He's already tried to kill her twice. And he'll probably try again if we don't catch him. You want me to tell her, isn't that it? Yeah, well, you may have noticed she doesn't exactly trust me. I've noticed. All right, what do you have in mind? Well, I'm making arrangements now, and I'd like you to tell her sometime today. OK. I'm sorry, Steve. Yeah, well, it's all part of the job, isn't it? Hello, Dr. Johnson. Yes, Stephen. Who is it this time? It's our secretary, Pat. Yes, Pat, what can I do for you? Steve, Paula seems to be suffering from some rather bad headaches. That's not surprising. Did she sleep last night? Not a wink. She wants to know if you're coming by today. I'll be over later. And also, Steve, she wants to know if you could bring a bottle of scotch or something. Good heavens. Look, uh, there's some gin in the cupboard. She drank it last night. All of it? Look, you tell her that... Now, I'll, I'll tell her when I come over. Bit of a tippler, is she? It's going to be one of those days, Doctor. Hmm. It's always one of those days, Doctor. Oh. Was that Steve on the phone? Yeah, he said he'd be by in a while. Thank God. I think I'm going to die. Hey, hey, I saw that. Patty cheats at patience. <laughs> Do you have to make so much noise? Only another three hours, Paul. I know, I know. Did you take those aspirin? What I need is a Bloody Mary. Did, did you ask Steve? Yes, I did, and he said no. Oh. Hey, there's a pub up the street. No. Well, Paul, he could go. Sorry, I have to stay here. <sighs> it's like being in a bloody jail. Why don't you read a book? No, thank you. Hey, can you play gin rummy? Mr. Cross? Harry's down. Yeah? There's uh, been a slight delay. Where's the girl now? Well, I'm very close to finding her. It'll be done tonight. You told me 24 hours. All right, it'll be a few more hours. The cops have us somewhere, but I'll find her. Where are you now? Uh, well, I'm in the city, in a phone booth. All right, Harry. I'll give you until tonight. This is your last chance, is that clear? Yeah. Tonight. Goodbye, Harry. It was Harry Stanton. It's only a matter of time before the police find him. And they want to know who hired him. So he poses now a greater threat to me than the girl. I want you to find him and kill him. I figure that right. You owe me about two months' pay. Well. Hi. Hello. How have you two been getting on? Oh, fine. She's fine. I don't feel all that well. Anyone who drinks a whole bottle of gin doesn't feel very well. How's it been going, Paul? Do you know she's a card sharp? 
Well, now that you're here, I think I'll nip out and buy a few things. Would you get me some cigarettes? Okay. Uh, why don't you take a breather, Paul? Yeah, thanks, Doc. You need a breather after that, mate. You're weirdo. I'm afraid I've been a bit of a trial. Yes. Where does it hurt? All over. <laughs> here. What's that? Aspirin. Take two. I know. And call you in the morning. Oh, it'll go away. Eventually. I don't think I've thanked you properly for all you've done. There's no need. I feel that someone really cares about what happens to me. Good. I think I'm falling in love with you. <laughs> I, I bet you say that to all your doctors. drink but we're a little low right now now just a minute you ease off at least till your headache disappears there's some orange juice right there all right just for you we're having trouble tracking down the killer oh we're running out of time and we've got to get to him before he finds you yeah so sergeant maloney would like to lay a trap for him using me as bait if you agree Anything's better than waiting. I know you've been through a great deal. I'll be all right. If you're around. I'll be here. Melanie. Well, oh, put her on. Yes. Um, my name's Jacqueline Maxwell, and I'm a close friend of Paula Feldon's. I've been looking all over the city for her. Where is she? Uh, Miss Maxwell, she's in protective custody just now. What? And I'm afraid I can't divulge her present whereabouts. I don't believe it. Oh, nevertheless, it's true. Why hasn't she called me? I can get her to ring you if you like. Huh? Uh, could I have your number, please? Yes, it's um, 8581212. Good. Well, I'll get her to ring you. Uh, goodbye. Excuse me, you're a friend of Paula Felton's, aren't you? Yes, what of it? Oh, my name's Charlie Happel. I'm a, an old friend of hers. I'm down from Brisbane, but I can't seem to find her. Paula isn't free at the moment. Oh, well, look, let me freshen that up for you. Eh? Randy and Dry, wasn't it? There? That's right, isn't it? Oh, thank you. Paula told me she'd be free all week. What happened? All I know is the police have her. No, she hasn't been arrested. No, no, she's in protective custody or something. That's strange. I wonder what all that's about. You got me. Damn it. Well, I'm down here for a week. Oh, she's not the only fish in the sea. Besides, she's been chasing after a guy. Really? Yeah, some doctor fella, and he's a copper too. And you don't want to mix with that lot, do you? No, no. So if I were you, I'd forget it. Now, on the other hand... But when you see her, say hello for me, will you? Keep the change. Where are you going? Business level. I'll catch up with you later, eh? Hello? Hello, Mrs. Jones. My name is Graham Trevor, and I'm from Wonderfield Carpets, and I'm... I'm sorry, I'm afraid you must have the wrong number. Is this, uh, a 312076? Yes, but there's no one here named Jones. Or might I ask to whom I'm speaking, please? Well, this is a silent number, Mr. Whatever you're... Well, we do have lists of all the numbers in that area, madam. I was wondering... I'm very sorry. I have to go now. Goodbye. You still at it? It's very relaxing. You ought to try it. No, thanks. Now, a drink. That'd really relax me. Sorry? It's just up the street. Orders. <sighs> hey. What about another game of gin rummy? No, thanks. Clean me out. You don't talk much, do you? Oh, no! It's Paul, it's over Chloe.
a small private hotel about a mile and a half from here. How's he going to find it? I'll leak it through some informants. He'll find it soon enough. What if he suspects? Oh, every precaution will be taken, Steve. Yeah, I know. Look, have I ever lost a patient of yours? CI-216. CI-216. We have a report that Paula Felden has escaped protective custody. And Paul came in to help me, and when we got back, she was gone. Yeah, gone to the pub back in ten minutes. When was this? 25, 30 minutes ago. Oh, I hope to God Steve finds it here. What was she wearing? A yellow jumper and, and green pants. Well? No, no good. She didn't go to the pub. Well, what do you think? Do you think she'd run off? Uh, Pant, what was her state of mind before she left? Well, she was bored, restless like yesterday. I'm terribly sorry, Steve. Forget it, Pant. Dear Mr. Redding, read your letter of the 5th. I'm happy to inform you that I'm expecting a... Hello? Oh, yes. Where are you now? No, no, keep her there. Try and make it look like suicide. But of course. She's tired, depressed. What could be more understandable? Call me later. Sure. Stanton has the girl at her flat. That's right. Both of them. Yeah, I know, Tommy, but this is important. It's the Cheryl Rose case. Your know, flatmate's gone missing. Well, I've got them all out now, but I need a couple of extra cars. Well, you know what they're like. She could be anywhere by now. Look, you know I'd return the favour, Tommy. OK, mate, thanks for you. Steve? Yeah. What if she hasn't just walked off? What if she's been taken? It's possible. Look, I'd never forgive myself. Come on, get some coffee. Anything? Not yet, no. You know, I hate to lose a patient, Tim. Yeah. Well, what now? Well, we go out looking for it. You care to come? Yeah. Right, look, we'll try Paula's flat first and then some of her friends. Uh, Pat, you stay by the telephone. Come on. This is all right. Get an ambulance fast. Right. Don't talk. I want to apologize. It's going to be all right. I've been such a nuisance. Did you get him? Here we got him. Good. How is she? It's hard to say. She's lost all her blood. Mm. Do you want to go back to the office? No, I'll hang around. Yeah, she grows on you after a while, doesn't she? She does. Oh. Is he going to live? Oh, I think there's a few years left of him yet. Yeah, that should fix you up. Ooh. Thanks a lot. All right, come on, sit over here. Where'd you get your silent numbers from, Harry? Have you got a friend in the PMG? How did you get tied up with Frank Krause? Look, this silent treatment isn't going to do your case any good, Harry. If that girl dies, you've got three counts of murder against you. I didn't shoot her. I sure did, I suppose. And then you shot him, eh? Or was it suicide? Self-defense. Who hired you to kill Cheryl Rhodes? Look, whoever ordered you killed isn't going to let a mere prison stand in his way. As I see it, your future doesn't look very bright. I'll get it if I talk to you. Not if we can get him put away. Now, figure the odds. All right. All right, I work for a guy called Fenton down in Melbourne. Krauss is a friend of his. He wanted a man from out of town to do a little job. Cheryl Rose? Yes. So Frank Krauss hired you to kill Cheryl Rose? That's what I said. Thanks, Harry.
mind if I come in? No, not at all. I'm not interrupting. Yes, nothing important. Yes. That's not bad. You must be doing well for yourself. Oh, very good of you. You know, I can remember the days when you were just an ordinary bricky. <laughs> Look at you now. Uh, well, what can I do for you, Maloney? You ever hear of a girl called Cheryl Rhodes? Yeah. Took her out a few times. Why? She was murdered a couple of days ago. I heard about it, yeah. Oh, nice kid. Oh, not really. She was selling heroin for a living. Oh, you're joking. And she got into trouble with her boss and... I see. Uh, well, um, what's this got to do with me? I thought you might be interested to know that we've got the bloke who killed her. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. And he talked. Well, go ahead, Crutt. I've been waiting five years for this. Hello, Dr. Johnson. Oh, yes, hang on, he's just come in. It's Pat. Oh, Pat, it's Tim. Yeah, we've got him, we've just put him in the cell. That's Paula. I'll be right over. Have they brought her out yet, Pat? No, but it shouldn't be long. Gordon told me that the killer was an ex-policeman. Yeah, it was a long time ago. His type are best forgotten, Pat. Oh, she's a tough little lady. She's going to be all right. Oh, great. <laughs> Come on, let's go and have some coffee. Are those for me? Yeah, they're, um, they're from all of us. Thanks. <laughs> and thanks for patching me up again. Any time. <laughs> what is it? We always seem to meet in this damn hospital. Yes, we do, yes. You know, I, I think you should take a nice long holiday. I'm going to. Oh, when? As soon as I get out of here. I've got a lot of thinking to do. I wish you luck. I wonder if I deserve it. I think so. Anyway, we uh, make our own luck, really, don't we? Do you really think I can change things around? I'll lay odds on it. Hmm? I think I'll make you my permanent doctor. Any time you're in town. Do you think we could have a drink together before I go? Sounds great. Look, um, I'll let you rest and I'll come back later, OK? See Thank you. 